Alright, welcome back to round number four here at Guardian Games for Modern Mondays in Portland, Oregon. This is Travis Cooper from Portland Paper. I'm hanging out with... Justin Hadley. And yeah, we're watching some Modern. I think we have for sure Chris Wamsley playing Is It Phoenix and Quentin might be playing something different than he's usually on. I just made the assumption that Quentin was on Death Shadow because that's been a thing that they played for a long time, but I think we might be in for a bit of a surprise here and we're going to see what the first couple of turns are and find out what Quentin's on. Ooh, elves. Okay. Just see the Dwine and yep. Delete. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, green black elves with the Guiltleaf Palace. Oh, I, oh, there's also a Horizon Canopy, but that could still be Okay, so black. it could be like combo shaman-y things yeah. going on. Or too. just Horizon Canopy because it's a great, great land. Yeah, drawing cards are good. And we have turn one bolt. Bolt the bird. Yeah, Arclight seems pretty good against uh, a deck that's playing a bunch of one-mana creatures when you have gut shots mm -hmm. and lightning bolts, thing in the ice, etc. And thing in the ice would be an amazing turn to play here, and, and I got there one. it is. Yeah, this 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 matchup seems very very favorable. Or although elves can can definitely get get out of hand. Um, but I think I think is it is it's in a good a good spot. <coughs> Getting a basic island off that fetch land. Is it really in a good spot? <laughs> I said that to Chris earlier, and he said that I would not be the last person to, to make that joke. No, yeah, <laughs> definitely not the first either. All right, get a little draw, get a little scry going on, t ticking down some counters on thing. Things probably, I mean, it's going to be nuts if it flips, but then also mm -hmm. Quinn's going to be able to just have a bunch of chump blockers, I'd imagine, with Win and Delete hanging out in the deck, etc. And get a collected company, you're going to be spell pierced. Uh, I love Is It Charm. Such Such a good card. And it seems like we got a lot of lands going on here for Quentin, which is not necessarily the best, but all right. Dwine and delete. Gonna get a token. Having your other elf uh, lightning bolted with the Dwine and Delete trigger on the stack, or, or with, with the Dwine and Elite on the stack, is always, uh, always a feel bad. Oh, I love doing it as I someone <laughs> that plays lots of lightning bolts. You usually play Jess guy, so I feel like you, you, you like electrolyze in this matchup too. Yeah, I mean just just all all the bolts like helixes, bolts, yeah. electrolyze, just snapcaster bolts. Pretty favorable matchup. Um, I mean, I feel like elves. If you're going to be playing uh, against decks that aren't going to interact with a lot of creatures, is just going to be like super strong. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but if you're playing against decks that are prepared to interact with lots of creatures, it's just you don't have a lot of Plan B's. All right, that's another thing in the ice. Uh, it does not bounce the Awoken Horror, so that is a thing. It's not just a thing; it's a thing in the ice. It's a thing, thing. It's a thing, thing. It's the it's the magic thing. All right. Fortunately, the uh, Awoken Horde does not have Trample, even though it looks like it would have Trample. It's trampling a boat pretty hard in the f in, the, in the art, uh, so chump blocking is definitely a thing. Yeah, if we get another flip of oh yeah, that is a lethal attack. Yeah, which the flipping, which it flipping is very easy to do. Hardcast Phoenix. Huh. The, hi the hidden mode. Well, Quentin can have a potentially interesting next turn. All right, making some more elves here. Might be uh, Quentin might be hoping that uh, Chris does not have the uh, spell <laughs> density to flip the Awoken Horror. 
Because uh, I do see that Quinn has a, uh, a clan caller and an elvish uh, archdruid in his hand. So he could be hoping to kind of go a little little more wide. Yeah, maybe maybe like cheese some like serious points of damage in here. Yeah. The the fact that Chris hard cast the Phoenix might might either shows that he doesn't have a way to get in the graveyard or doesn't have the spells to cast to to bring it back. But I have a feeling that Chris probably has some some more spells. Some more things to say. Yeah, there's no real reason to flip it right now. Right. Um, when it's always you can do it when your opponent goes to attack. So see if you're see if Quentin's gonna do any chump blocking. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well, may maybe he doesn't have the spell density. <laughs> yeah. uh, They're that, good blockers, though. That was amusing. So we've seen all four marsh flats in our in our in one of our players' hands earlier, and all four thing in the ices. Yeah. Wow. You're uh, something about like quads. And there's th uh, three divine deletes too. Can we see the fourth divine delete? <laughs> Yep, uh, Hardcast Arclight is going to do it there. So it seems like an exceedingly favorable matchup on Chris's side. Your, um, most all of your spells interact with the board. Mm -hmm. um, Thing in the Ice, also really strong card. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you have Flyers, which Elves usually has a problem blocking Flyers. Yeah, not, not only is Thing in the Ice a, a great... Uh, it, it's flipping uh, claws is great for for the matchup, but the fact that it's a zero four is nothing to sh nothing to shy at either. It will pretty much block until until it flips, block very efficiently. Yeah, and uh, there's no real super instant speed tricks to pump your team necessarily, so. unless you uh, collect a company into two two lords. But that's uh, li a li li <laughs> living the dream, as they might say, or or magic Christmas land, as my friend says. Okay, so probably you know in elves you're assembling your army game one, kind of wanting to do the combo y thing of just you know spam the board, have uh, a bunch of lords, generate a lot of mana. Uh, games two and three, especially since we're seeing uh, both white and black in the mana base, it seems like it's more geared uh, towards black. That uh, probably something like abrupt decay, assassin's trophy, maybe even fatal push, etc. Yeah, I think I think abrupt decay would be would be ex would be exceedingly good in this matchup. Getting rid of the uh, awoken horror, uh, un uncounterable awoken horror would be great. But I don't I don't know if uh, if Chris has any counter spells. I'm not sure if he would be if he would be bringing them in or leaving them in in this. Uh, yep, it is just four rounds here tonight. Depending on when these folks get down, we might throw up another. We have uh, six undefeated players after. Round number three, so uh, there's two other tables that are undefeated playing each other right now. Uh, we have seen a couple of those folks already. This is the only table where we did not uh, actually see either of these players before this evening. Four color prison. It's over there. Yeah, I think we have four color prison playing uh, eight rack, which <laughs> that's a very interesting thing with. Uh, Oh, what is it? What bottle cloister? Bottle cloister, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if uh, if shrieking affliction and um, uh, the rack. I was like, what's the name of the other card? Oh, it's the rack. <laughs> if uh, shrieking affliction and the rack triggered on uh, on eight racks upkeep, then a, a bottle cloister would not be great. But I think bottle cloister is actually very good. Yeah, you get to stack your own triggers. So, <coughs> or when it's your turn, you stack your upkeep triggers how you want them to stack. But any sort of howling mine effect is not not ideal for eight rack. But it would be another interesting matchup to see. Right. Okay, so best turn ones for Quentin are probably going to be something like turn one, Heritage Druid, turn two, Dwinnin's Elite, 
make a bunch of mana. Mm -hmm. um, Chris is probably, uh, you know, I, the Phoenix deck list change up their sideboard a lot. Um, could be some Static Asters in there. Could I know that they, even though it seems counterintuitive, there's Anger of the Gods usually in the Phoenix sideboards so that can be a blowout against Elves. Yeah, I could see Anger of the Gods being being very good in this matchup. I mean, it does get rid of your Phoenix, and Phoenix did win the game for Chris last round, but I think the thing in the ice is we're eventually going to get there. So I see that uh, Quentin brought in the uh, the damping sphere, which which is which is good. Uh, it does it does prevent Chris from getting the three spells for the Phoenix, but. It doesn't really prevent the thing in the ice. What's your thoughts on uh, Quentin bringing in Damping Sphere? I think it's fine. Like, you kind of want to have a couple of explosive turns with elves, and you can just slow down your opponent um, by being... Because a lot of times they're going to be on, like, two lands, uh, and so you know, it might take them a couple turns to actually flip thing in the ice. Mm -hmm. By that time, you've gotten some attacks in, developed your board, maybe you've played some Shaman on the packs. It's all right. I don't think it's great, but it's something I'd probably bring in. Yeah, it it does it does uh, p make some for some potentially awkward situations for elves and turns where they want to play an, an, a number of elves in the same turn. But I still think I, I still think it's, it's it's probably more 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 good than it is bad. Yeah, I think you just sequence how you how you yeah. play that card. And it looks like we have a lot of collected companies in that hand. Three, I think. Wow, and, a, sh and a shaman. Ah, uh, yeah. Really don't like going going down to five, but that seemed like too slow of a hand. Trade one of those collected companies for Lanoir elves, and then maybe you've got something. Cause yeah, then you could I would take that. Yeah. Yes, this is the fourth and final round here, and unfortunately our Elves player is mulliganing to five with the Scry, puts it to the bottom, and land into Elf. I mean, you can't you can't ask for much more than that on a multi five. I do see an abrupt decay. We're missing the uh, missing the black source here, and that hurts. Good shot, the Elf. And got an Edel Sentinel. Yeah. There's an arc light in the graveyard. Do you see a s scavenging ooze, abrupt decay, hanging out in Quinn's hand? So decent cards. And thing in the ice. And picks up another elf. Probably swing first. Just good practice. Yeah. <laughs> it's correct. Yeah, if this uh, if this finishes up with more than say twenty minutes left, we're gonna get another match up here. Um, so we get a full round four. And it's kind of looking pretty rough for Quentin. Yeah, Dwayne and Delete was the was the draw. <coughs> All right, making a token. Ooh. And there go all the elves. And the thing in the ice still lives. Huh, curious to cast the Serum Vision on this turn. I guess maybe you're wanting to down tick the thing, but I'd be tempted, especially since you have the arc light in the graveyard, to wait and, I mean, do that the following turn, especially when you have four mana, but Chris is already so far ahead that that type of sequencing might not actually matter that much. Yeah, is it, is he, he might just want to get the, the thing flipped to, to 
to try and close it as, as fast as possible, but even then holding it for that following turn is still still effectively gets the same number of counters off. I think he has a gut shot in his hand as well, so he'll get both out. He has pl and Quentin going down to six. <laughs> and there's Terramander, so it's probably going to be, yep, that's game. Unless there's a one mana green Wrath of God. Okay, that was a pretty quick one, so we're gonna go and find another match to end the evening with. Be back momentarily. <laughs>